Whether you're parking at a campground or boondocking in the wilderness, leveling your coach is important. I'm going to show you how we do it coming up. Welcome to RV Street. So we've already arrived at our campground, we've backed in, and so we're going to pick it up from there. Let's go. All the blocks are right here. I made these out of tuba tens, or uh, tuba twelves. I could get something that's lighter and plastic, but I don't like that stuff. It's too brittle, I don't care for it. So basically under each pad, we take one of these and we take one of these. And that prevents my jacks from having to extend so far. So as you can see, this is how we position our blocks underneath the, uh, the jacks. This does several things. One, it keeps my jack stands from having to extend very far. And I like that. There's no sense in overextending them. Two, it keeps the pads of the jacks, this area here, it keeps them clean. So as it rains or you're in mud or rock or whatever, you have this barrier between the ground and these. We've done this on all four jacks. And I'm gonna go ahead and start leveling. I level manual. I do not do auto, man, uh, auto leveling because auto leveling always raises the coach way too high. So the first thing I do is I leave the engine running and then I turn the jacks on and I raise the front first just till the jack stands kiss these pads. Then I go to the, I raise the back. Good. Joni, go look at that pad over there on the other side. Is that thing in that hole or is it just barely on the... I'm going to have... Oh, it's not even on there. Yeah, yeah. just drop it down just a skosh. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we had to make a little adjustment on that far pad over there that jack was not totally seated in that block but it is now and I have levels little hand levels I usually use my iPhone with a level app to level it uh, to level the coach inside uh, because it's very important to have a level coach for the refrigerator to work correctly so let's go inside and I'll show you my backup way that I level I, I mentioned that I can't level uh, this time because I was using my phone for this video. These are the other levels that I use uh, when my phone is not available. So as I was saying outside, you can see the refrigerator, the stove, and the countertop. They're all right here uh, next to each other. And I have done some testing where this is just as level as here. The refrigerator so there's no need for me to open the refrigerator or open the freezer and try to get that foam balanced here <clears throat> i've learned that just uh putting a manual level right here on this counter works just as well so we've accumulated um some other levels that we had with our trailer and and i went ahead and kept those so what we do is i i just got a couple of extra these are the kind you just peel and stick on a trailer or whatever but I went ahead and kept them and I keep them in the drawer. So when I don't have my phone to level, I just pull these all out and I just, I got a two way here, uh, side to side, front to back, and a couple of others here. And I even got a round disc one here. And so I'll just use these. I'll just throw these out here and I'll look at all of them and I'll determine whether I am level or within that spec of being level and I'm good to go. Um, it takes me probably a total of, uh, I would say probably about three minutes or so to level. Once we've got the blocks and everything underneath the uh, jack stands, and now I'm in here looking at these levels and making little adjustments, 
it probably takes about three minutes or so to level the coach. Now I just wanted to bring up uh, a point about why I choose to do manual leveling. Uh, I learned very quickly that if I used auto level, which a lot of your newer coaches have, I would say probably most coaches today uh, have auto leveling, uh, it just tends to raise the coach too high, uh, especially on a gas motorhome like ours. And um, so I just wanted to learn how to get it level but not have to raise it so high. And I turn the jack, the leveling system on. I wait about five seconds and then I hold that button again and it puts it into manual mode. Then on our coach, I raise the front first. This is according to the manual and many other uh, recommendations I've gotten from other people. And the reason, you, the reason I'm putting the front first is because it raises that up and takes pressure off of the windshield. Uh, this is extremely important like in the winter time when it's really cold. I've read places where people have actually cracked uh, their windshield from either improper leveling or uh, they didn't warm up the interior of the motorhome first. So if it's cold, I'm going to warm up. I got the, the, heat, the heat on and the fans on up there in the front by the windshield and I'm heating up that area, uh, that windshield, before I'm going to uh, raise or level the coach. But regardless of that, I always raise the level, the front first when I level. So I've got it in manual mode. I bring the front jacks down first and let them kiss the blocks and just raise it maybe an inch or so. That takes the pressure off the front. Then I go and do the same thing in the back. I go to the panel and I hit the back jack. The back jacks come down and they kiss the blocks. Then I'll take my iPhone, I'll launch the app, I'll set it on the cabinet or the counter, the tabletop, right next to the refrigerator. Sometimes I used to open up the door of the refrigerator and actually put it on the ledge of either the refrigerator or the freezer. But my phone was kind of having a hard time getting balanced there and I just kind of uh, didn't do that anymore. So now uh, I've done other look, I've studied the way that the counter and the stove and the refrigerator is all right there. Everything is all at the same level. So now I just level right on the table next to the refrigerator. So I launched the app on my phone. I, I set the phone uh, on the counter and I'm looking do I need to raise it in the front, right or the back, raise it from side to side, whatever. The engine's still running, and I'm looking at my app, and I just go back and forth to the front and keep adjusting the front and back, side to side, until I'm dead on level. You don't have to have it perfect, but it needs to be darn per almost perfect. Um, I think the uh, difference is uh, six degrees front and rear, three degrees side to side. But the reason that is important of having your coach level, like I said, is because if you don't, uh, if you have an absorption refrigerator, a ref that refrigerator will go downhill very quickly. They have to be level for that to work. Uh, uh, an absorption RV refrigerator basically uses heat, ammonia and hydrogen gas and water and it's a it's a chemical process that happens within a series of tubes and that's what cools the refrigerator if the refrigerator is not level while it's sitting still it can over time ruin absorption refrigerator so i pay close attention to making sure that that refrigerator is very, very level. Uh, and then just one last note, I've been a millwright uh, in the past, I was a journeyman millwright for many, many years, uh, worked in chemical plants and refineries and the sundry different types of factories. And so I really know how important maintenance is and I'm really big on maintenance. I don't like surprises on the road or getting broken down somewhere if I can help it. 
it's very important to take care of these jacks. This cylinder has a seal up in here and it's very important to keep these clean so as they retract and deploy dirt and other debris doesn't gouge and open up and ruin that seal. And plus, especially even if you park next to the coast or wherever where you have salt water and other types of uh, damaging conditions, you want to keep this shaft protected. And the way to do that is with this 3M uh, dry silicone sealant, uh, a lubricant. And the way you do this is, is you just spray a little bit right on the shaft, a little bit on a paper towel, and then I come and I wipe this. And I do this every time when I get ready to leave a destination. If I've been sitting someplace for several days or a couple, three weeks, these shafts are dirty. There's dust, debris, all types of things on here. And I want to make sure that when I retract these, these shafts are, are nice and clean and they're lubricated. So I highly recommend uh, this uh, silicone dry lubricant. Things like WD-40 and stuff like that are not good because they they're not a lubricant, first of all and they uh, dry out. Now, some people I've heard, if your jack stand gets stuck, they haven't re deployed them very often or they're stuck, you could use a WD-40 to maybe unjam it. But this is the way you take care of these so they don't get stuck in the first place. This is a great product. It lasts two to three weeks. This dry lubricant, it puts a nice little coating on there, keeps the metal nice and clean and keeps your seals working in top order. I'll be sure to put a link down below where it'll take you right to where you can buy this product. Uh, and of course, that purchase would be uh, a great way to support our channel. But I highly recommend it. I've been using this now for about 18 months and I have zero problems with my jacks and you can see the condition of them. They're just like brand new. Uh, so I'm really big on maintenance and as I showed you in that video uh, using this uh, 3M dry silicone uh, on those uh, jack shafts, man this stuff is awesome. Uh, one can last a long time, um, but it'll really really take care of your uh, jack stands. So don't get in the habit of trying to do stuff cheap and using WD-40 and that type of stuff. It won't keep those seals lubricated it evaporates and it's not a lubricant anyway uh, so if you're gonna do it do it right and it'll put a protective seal over there and protect them Joni and I really appreciate you joining us we're gonna really work hard to bring you better video every time make it relevant as we travel learn and share with you guys I hope this video was helpful and if it is click the like button and subscribe below. That would really help us out in our channel. Anyway, this is Martin. We'll see you later. Stick around.